Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, welcome to the family. I am so happy to have you guys here. Today we are talking about moon manifestation. If you're interested in the cycles of the moon and how to utilize that energy to better manifest your dreams, then make sure you guys keep watching. So in this video, I am going to give you a strong foundation of knowledge that you can use in your everyday practice. I am going to break down every single moon phase, what it means, how to utilize it. But first, before we get into that, it is crucial that you guys understand the lore and the background of the moon and why we use the moon. Why do we believe it has magical properties? So Luna, which actually means moon in Latin, was a Roman moon goddess, also known as Selene in Greek mythology. Luna was the sister of Sol, which was the the sun god and Aurora who was the female goddess of dawn. So Luna was actually worshipped at the full and the new moon. The Roman goddesses of the moon and their Greek counterparts were actually believed to have formed in threes. So Luna was actually associated with two other goddesses. One was Diana who was the goddess on earth and of the half moon. She was worshipped for fertility and easy birth. The other goddess was Hecate who was the goddess in the underworld and of the dark moon. She was worshipped for magic and witchcraft. And it goes a little bit deeper than that but for the sake of this video let's just keep it simple so together all three of these goddesses formed different facets of womanhood and therefore they actually became connected to the cycles of the moon many of you may already know that the moon is often associated with this divine feminine energy well this is where it originated from and another really interesting thing to note is that the cycles of the moon actually last approximately 28 days and if we look at a woman's menstrual cycle it is actually about the same length so therefore we're Working with the moon cycles and energies can actually help you connect closer to yourself, your body, your energy. It definitely has a very powerful element to it. But does that mean working with the moon's energy and magic only for women? No, it's not. Absolutely not. So the key thing to understand here is that we all have divine feminine energy within us, just like we all have divine masculine energy. Our minds sometimes have a hard time grasping this because we live in this world of polarity or society society has to label everything. And feminine and masculine may not be the best ways to describe it, but the English language is very limited, so we will just stick with these terms for now. But think of it as the yin and the yang. Divine feminine energy is that more receptive energy. It's going within, understanding yourself, knowing when to take a break and reevaluate things. There's something very powerful about that energy. It's a very loving and nurturing energy, which we need to approach other people in our life with, but we also need to approach ourselves with. The masculine energy is the more active energy so it's the energy of doing things getting things done it is the energy of hard work and taking action but without the feminine counterpart you're gonna burn out and with only just the feminine counterpart and not the masculine energy you're never gonna get anything done so it's important to balance both of these energies in our life and men and women and non-binary individuals need to understand that they need both I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this very hard, but you know how the moon affects the tides? How the phases of the moon affect the way they rise and they fall? So if the moon can affect the water on the earth to this degree, what is it doing to our bodies? The human body is comprised of about 60% water. Sometimes it's a higher number than that. If the moon can affect the water, can it not then affect our waves, our energies, our moods? Just some food for thought for you guys. But with that being said, we are gonna go into the moon phases now that you have a clear understanding Understanding of the moon's lore and background and where all of these beliefs came from. Phase one is the new moon and is all about new beginnings. The new moon is also sometimes referred to as the dark moon, which can actually take a completely different course of practice and interpretation. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to focus on the new beginnings. We'll leave the dark moon for a different video. So since the new moon is perfect for new beginnings, this is a time to set your intentions. It is time to make goals. It is time to create positive affirmations affirmations to keep you going while you're working towards your goal. This is also a great time to start new things, initiating a new relationship, starting a new job or a new project. If there's just something new that you want to try in general, the new moon energy is the perfect time to do it. So with that being said, there are so many different rituals and practices that you can do on the new moon to get you ready for the upcoming weeks ahead. You can journal things out, journal out all your intentions, your goals, get clear on what you want, make a vision board. This is another way to get clear on 
around what you want and you can hang it up in your room and see it every single day so you don't forget and you don't lose focus. There are also so many different types of manifestation magic that you can do at this time. Some people like to specifically work with the elements. You can work with water during this time and actually infuse your water with these intentions. You can also do scripting, you can do jar spells. I actually have a manifestation jar spell that I created and made a video on, so I'll link that below for you guys. Essentially, the energy is very powerful at this time. So if there is something that you've been wanting to do and you're having a hard time getting the ball rolling with that, this is the time to start manifesting that. So to start putting those intentions out into the universe. But not just that, motivate yourself to start taking the action required to get these things manifested. Phase two is the waxing crescent and is all about intention. And yes, the new beginning part was partially about intention. You want to set your intention, get clear on your intention, but this one goes a little bit deeper. Now that you've initially set that intention, you can take the time to reflect on it and really figure out what action do you need to take to manifest that. Remember, manifestation isn't all about just putting it out in the universe and sitting down and waiting for it to happen. You have to take action. We live in a physical 3D world. Are you going to take a course? Are you going to learn a new skill? Are you going to work on your resume? Resume so you can start applying to jobs. This is the time to start working hard on what you desire. So phase three is the first quarter moon and it is all about decision. Basically, this is a time to focus and really maximize your intention. You wanna show the universe, hey, I'm doing the work. Look at me, I'm taking action. I'm setting things into motion. Here, you can, you can maybe send me some opportunities my way. This is sometimes the point where people just give up because they're like, it's not working. This manifestation stuff is a whole bunch of people. Yes, because this is the point where they realize that it is actually more work than they thought it was. But this is the point where people give up too soon because right as they get past that difficulty, that obstacle, that is when the magic usually starts to happen. Phase four is the waxing gibbous moon and is all about refinement. Basically, this is the time of increasing energy and excitement. This is the home stretch. It's like you've worked so hard to get here. Now you just have to push a little bit further. This is also a great time to seal the deal on some sort of offer or job or an opportunity. Phase five is a full moon and is all about release. Now this is going to be one of your most common times to practice. A lot of the time people will practice on the full moon and the new moon because they are the major energies. So the full moon is very high energy and it is the perfect time to let go of things that are not serving you. Anything that might be getting in the way, any roadblocks that may have come up during this process of manifesting. The full moon also symbolizes various other things things like gratitude, abundance, fruition. So on a full moon, it is a good time to one, show gratitude for how far you have come so far, for all the things that you already have in your life. You already have so much abundance. Take the time to remember that because when you have gratitude, you feel so abundant and you are so much more likely to manifest the other things that you desire. If there's something that is still holding you back, if there's a little voice in the back of your head that is telling you, you do do not have what it takes. Now is the time to dig deep into that and let that go. If we don't work on that, it's going to hinder the manifestation process. There is no manifestation without self-reflection. It has to fit in there somewhere. This is when I personally love to do a burning ritual. It just works really well for me and I actually have a video all about that. I will link it below. In the video, I use paper. These days, I often actually use bay leaves because one of the correspondences of bay leaves is release and banishing. So I personally just love working with bay Bay leaves these days. You can use paper or bay leaves. It doesn't matter. And it's not a one and done process because we will always have limiting beliefs that try and sneak in. It's like cleaning your house. You don't clean your house once and it's good for forever. Like, oh, I don't have to clean my house ever again. No, next week it's dusty AF. Next week you've got fluffs all over the carpet that you gotta vacuum up again. It's upkeep. It's the same thing with your mind. You have to care for your mind. You have to do that cleanup every now and then. So make sure you guys are taking the time to do this because I think it'll make a huge difference in your ability to manifest. Phase six is the Wanning Gibbous Moon. And this moon is all about reflection. This is a time to reflect on what you've learned. It is also right after the process of letting go. So if you let go of something and you notice something pretty miraculous, a change in your mindset, a change in something that is happening in your daily life, then this is the time to reflect on that. This is the time to write it down so you remember. Don't forget that stuff because guaranteed there will come a point where you are back to square one. You are back to that dark place again. Unfortunately, it happens. It doesn't matter how evolved you are. We 
all have that moment in life of weakness where society kind of just puts us back into that place. And the best way to get over that is to remember what happened last time. Let's look back on that journal entry and that paradigm shift and see how did I get out of that? Because the more times you get yourself out of that dark place and into this better mindset, it's like working a muscle. You get better at it. It doesn't take as long to get yourself out of that. Now is also a great time to gain insight from other people. Ask for advice, ask for feedback, constructive criticism. This is the time to also see from other perspectives. If you're always looking at something from your perspective, you're never going to learn. You're never going to grow. This is also a time to reevaluate your relationships. Is there a friendship or a romantic relationship that is not serving you? Is there a relationship that is holding you back from your dreams and your manifestations? Now is the time to really distance yourself because the people that we spend the most time with in our life are the people that we become the most like. If you're hanging out with people that are not aligned with the kind of person you want to be, with the kind of path that you want to take, then you need to reevaluate that relationship. Same with the people you follow on Instagram. It is so crucial that we surround ourselves with the kind of energy that we want to attract. Phase seven is the last quarter moon. It is also known as the third quarter and it is all about forgiveness. There are a lot of things that we often hold on to in our life, whether it is a grudge, whether it is embarrassment or not forgiving ourselves for something that happened a long time ago. The problem is these things, they still hold us back. When we have that negative icky energy still stuck inside of us, it almost creates a cloud in our energy. So if there's something negative that you've been holding on to, it's time to release it. And forgiving somebody doesn't mean that you actually have to contact them. Because for example, if you were in a toxic relationship with somebody and contacting them would be a very bad idea, you don't have to contact them to forgive them. You just have to forgive them so that you can release the energy. It's not even about them at that point. It's about releasing and freeing yourself from the bounds of that relationship that has been holding you back. I highly recommend looking into this a little bit more. There's so many different ways to forgive. I often will journal it out, but I've also released people through cord cutting rituals and also burning rituals as well. Now is also the time to really start removing obstacles out of your path. A lot of the time the obstacles are mental, but they could be physical obstacles too. Basically, we're getting ready for the next new moon. We want to be prepared for that next new beginning. Now is also a really good time to work on your self-worth. So forgiveness doesn't have to just be forgiving other people. It could also be forgiving yourself. Really drive home the energy that you are worthy of all the things that you wish to manifest in your life. So phase eight is the waning present moon, also known as the balsamic moon. This phase is all about surrender. It is the end of this cycle. We are taking the time to reflect on what just happened. Maybe we're refocusing our intentions, our goals. It's also a time to embrace the darkness and not fear the unknown. And that in-between phase is sometimes scary, but it is becoming comfortable in that in-between phase that can be so empowering because it teaches us patience. But that doesn't mean that things aren't happening behind the scenes that we can't see. The universe is always working in very mysterious ways and just because we can't actually see it with our eyes doesn't mean that it's not happening. A quiet reflection may be a really good idea for this time to really sit in your energy, sit in the unknown, sit in the in-between, and also just kind of put out there, what is it that you want to manifest for the next cycle? Where do you want your focus to be? And after this phase, we are back at the new moon. So that is a lot of information, guys, and it may be a little bit overwhelming, so take some time to process it, take some time to reflect on it, utilize it in your own practice. If you need a refresher come back to this video but honestly guys there is so much more to the moon phases than this these are just the simple moon phases we can also get into different types of full moons for example and the different full moons associated with the seasons and then we get into lunar eclipse energy and there's honestly so much but this is a solid foundation for you guys to get started if you guys like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up I would really appreciate it it helps out my channel so much and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because as I put up new videos every single week and I would not want you guys to miss out on them. I hope you guys have an amazing night or day whenever you're watching this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.